Kenyon Lee Martin Sr., born December 30th, 1977. In the late 90s, early 2000s, traditional positions were still a thing teams cared about, unlike what we see today. A center had his back to the basket for the most part, and if he could hit a face-up jumper, it was icing on the cake. Wing players were usual focal points and could do multiple things for a team, which made them so valuable. One position that has always been undervalued and has quickly been redefined is the power forward aka 4 position. This position was the enforcer, hence the name. Could rebound, block shots, had a high motor so able to run the floor and guard more positions than the 5. Had a nice mid-range jumper and preferably had an attitude that sparked his team and the crowd. One player that was perfect for this role was Kenyon Martin. My first memory of Martin growing up was how ferocious his dunks were. Anytime his name is mentioned now, I remember how he tried to tear the rim off the backboard on every dunk and how feared he was under the basket or cutting through the lane preparing for a two-foot slam. Reminds me of a more mean Blake Griffin with less grace, less elevation, but more power. He was my type of power forward. Obviously at the time, he was that for many as he won every award possible as a senior at Cincinnati, became the number one overall draft pick, and made an all-star team. The word beast best describes a player like Martin. Many thought he would have a generational talent type of career at the four and become a key piece to a championship team both on offense and defense. Neither of those became a reality, instead for most of his career calling him a role player isn't far fetched and some even say he was a bus. Was Kenyon Martin a bus? Salute to my man Mr. Double Underscore Gambit 3190 for this request man. You've been patient with me getting this out and I really appreciate it. And I want to take some time to say I appreciate all you guys that message me and have conversations, leave comments, watch the videos. Doing these vids is therapeutic for me in a way. And I thank all of you for helping me express some of the thoughts I have about our great sport. Salute, appreciate the community, everyone that shows extra support on Patreon, Stunted Growth Music. I love you guys, man. And that's real. But let's get back to it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it. Stunt number one, injuries. Right away, I'd like to point out how much injuries took away from Kenyon Martin, who had he been a more healthy player, would be talked about as the first Zion, or as mentioned, Blake Griffin, or one of the best power forwards of his generation. He was that good and that fitted for that spot on the floor. A four point guards love playing with. He had size, could set screens, intimidating, defended, and could catch anything you put up. But multiple lower body injuries took that away and too soon. As in, before he even played a game in the NBA, he was already hobbled with his first bodily threat, a broken leg. Martin was a star his senior year in college, but took some time and patience getting to that point. He wasn't a top recruit in high school, in fact he was ranked as low as number 76. He also wasn't much of a factor in his first three college seasons. He kept with it and by year four had put it all together and now had the leadership space to showcase himself. And what a senior year he had. He averaged 18.9 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 3.5 blocks a game, and his team was ranked number one for most of the season, gearing up for a deep run in the tournament, something that had eluded Martin in his time as a Bearcat, never making it past the second round. He was the National Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Conference Player of the Year, and All-American. But right before the NCAA tournament, in the conference tournament's first game, he broke his leg, and the team fell in the second round once again. Sitting out until the 2000 draft, the Nets still took him number one overall in what some say was the worst draft of all time. A broken leg isn't that bad of an injury in itself, but I think it set the table for the other leg injuries he'd have for the rest of his career and took away some of his athleticism if that was possible, and made him less of the defensive presence he could have been. 
He averaged 12 points and 7 rebounds along with 1.7 block, good for first team all rookie. In year two, he was the team's leading scorer, although just at 14.9 points a game and just 5 rebounds. He played 73 games that year and 68 as a rookie. He's never played 82 games and in 15 years only at least 70 games four times. With a prime Jason Kidd, Kerry Kittles, Keith Van Horn, Richard Jefferson, and some really good role players, the team went to the NBA Finals in year two and was swept by the Lakers. His next major injury came in 0405 after being traded to Denver that forced him to have microfracture surgery on one of his knees, his first in two years. In 2006, after two games, he'd have another microfracture surgery on the other knee and missed the entire season in the prime of his career. From the 07-08 season, his games played dwindled every season after, as did his production, as Kenyon Martin was clearly done. Stunt number two, not great. The problem with a player like Kenyon Martin, although he was one of the more athletic players in those days, was that he wasn't that great at any one thing, especially after his injury history. In college, Martin was the classic example of what that system does to some players. Being able to choose the school you'll go to, having the program built around you, and the freedom that comes with, he looked great. He had back-to-the-basket moves, face-up, shot comfortably, and dominated on defense against smaller, less athletic players that would become future chefs or office workers and even YouTubers. Who, me? <laughs> even though he was only 6'9". When he got to the NBA against similar athletes who were just as strong, athletic, and also bigger, he struggled to do things like create his own shot, block shots, and even rebound, things he did well at Cincinnati. Scoring, not great. Rebounding, blocking shots, not great. Free throw shooting, definitely not great. And durability leading to availability, not great. Most important of them was creating his own shot. Martin was like DeAndre Jordan, Clint Capella in that way. He basically needed everything set up for him, but when you're not always playing with a point guard like Jason Kidd or slightly Chauncey Billups, that flaw really stands out. Luckily for Kevin, he did play with those guys for the most part and had a solid career, although he was expected to do a bit more. Stunt number three, death of the enforcer. The final stunt in the career of Kenyon Martin was the NBA changing. Not only were fouls called a lot closer, making it tough on players like Martin, player expressions and words with referees elevating from common to technical was huge. But more importantly, the power position of forward was beginning to turn into something different and is still evolving. No way could Martin play in this era with his physical style of play on every single play. His, what some would call, combativeness and attitude, and most importantly, his lack of the ability to create his own shot and stretch the floor. Martin himself actually wrote a great insightful piece on this where he feels he would have adjusted to the shooting, but with his mechanical movements and jump shot, I'm not sure. We do agree that this era would have been horrible for the player and personality he was. Players like Dirk Nowitzki, Chris Bosh, and eventually Kevin Love and more were becoming popular, with Dirk really making the newfound advantage a thing. He was perfect for that role, and more rough-edged guys like Kenyon Martin were dying out. He made the playoffs every year in Denver, and even the conference finals in 08-09, where he still was an effective player. But by the 2011-2012 season, his style of play was all but finished. All in all, Kenyon Martin still had a solid NBA career. He averaged 12 points, 6 rebounds, and a block. 
played in the finals, was an all-star, played 15 seasons, and may be the only player to survive microfracture surgeries on both knees that pretty much took away his prime but didn't stop his longevity. He does great work off the floor, starting a foundation for youth who don't have father figures in their lives where he helps provide where he can. He also supports the National Stuttering Foundation for people like himself that struggle with the disorder. He was a huge figure in my basketball growth and respected across the league. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.